Yes, uh, Bionetic Sports, my name is Brian and I'm back of course with another video, something uh, that I always try to do here to really give you information as well as uh, news coming in from all the sporting circles and of course uh, it's always updates about uh, Uganda, Tanzania as well as Kenya's preparation for uh, the next big things and uh, of course we all know that uh, what is on the cards already is uh, the Chan Championships uh, that are going to be held in Uganda kenya as well as tanzania a lot of rumors uh, by the end of last week and of course beginning this week have been surfacing uh, showing how uh, kenya is going to be replaced by rwanda as the host of course the uh, reports are coming in internally from kenya uh, showcasing how already uh, CAF has spoken to rwanda and uh, showed them that uh, of course they're interested in hosting this tournament remember uh, that rwanda has hosted this tournament before uh, in previous years and of course they are really really they have very good uh, small but good stadiums and of course they have the mighty amahoro stadium uh, that looks all uh, structured and uh, the other stadiums including uh, the Chigali uh, Pele, Pele Stadium, I think it's one of uh, the few that were inaugurated uh, recently. Of course, uh, Gianni Fatino, uh, the uh, gentleman in charge of, of course, FIFA coming out and uh, also visiting them. So it is been a small country that has really tried to do a lot. And uh, a lot of questions have surrounded uh, Kenya, especially with their uh, bid to host this tournament. Uh, you remember they had a failed bid in 2016. And uh, uh, it's not the first time they failed to host. It's been now twice that they failed to host uh, this prestigious tournament. And a lot of things have been surfacing. One of the reasons as uh, per the people that really are in for uh, Rwanda replacing Kenya is that, uh, of course, the uh, stadiums that were supposed to be renovated are not uh, ready there. And of course, uh, I am here to clarify a few things. There is no confirmation from CAF already uh, that uh, Rwanda will be replacing. And I've seen an official that, uh, of course, is from South Africa and is in charge of uh, you remember, like I told you, that every country has uh, a CAF uh, that is uh, a capital officer that is uh, now uh, situated in that country or stationed in that country uh, to really monitor the progress and see what is really not happening and what is really happening. And of course, uh, it seems like uh, CAF are very interested in seeing Kenya being part of all this uh, because one thing I've noticed that uh, in all the things that uh, they've done, they've tried to really uh, give the position of Kenya. I saw a CAF official talking on behalf of Kenya and saying that we are here to help Kenya uh, work out this uh, tournament. And uh, just like I told you, there are a few mistakes. I also noticed from uh, the new uh, cabinet secretary, Mr. McMahon, uh, coming out. Uh, I don't know if I've said the name right, but uh, him coming out and talking about uh, the mistakes that were done by the previous regimes, including uh, putting two venues uh, to host this tournament. Yet uh, one was already enough because you remember Uganda uh, put Mandela National Stadium one venue. Uh, Tanzania, despite having uh, more than uh, two ready stadiums, uh, they put in the Belgian Kappa Stadium only uh, in there. So Kenya put themselves on pressure for nothing. And it goes back to the other issue of them trying to impress, uh, which has really led them to uh, going to uh, a lot of things in there. Of course, um, the, 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 the new Atlanta Sporty, Sports City Stadium, or you can call it the Atlanta City Stadium, looks on course uh, with elevations, of course, in the stands and all that stuff. Uh, things look very good and uh, they look very positive. On the side of, uh, that is uh, the likes of uh, um, the other stadium, uh, which is supposed to be, of course, one of the other main stadiums, the Kasarani Stadium. Uh, it looks like there is slow progress already. Like I told you, the roof is supposed to be worked on. They're supposed to be covering the roof. And then on the other side, they're also having issues to do with, of course, uh, the uh, sound system, which, uh, according to uh, the uh, minister, he came out and talked about how, uh, of course, they've been given options of even hiring uh, equipment. They don't need to really purchase equipment for this uh, stadium uh, as something that might take a little bit longer. So that is another suggestion that was given to them. And then the other thing is that they don't have to complete, according to the minister, they don't have to completely, uh, you know, finish uh, that uh, stadium stadium, the Kasarani Stadium, they have to work on the few uh, requirements. Of course, there are uh, things that are, are supposed to be on this stadium, including the lights and all that stuff. The key things that are in there, there are things that are not key that uh, can be worked on uh, in due course, especially in preparation for the African Cup of Nations uh, 2027. So uh, with that reason, he has come out and, of course, uh, showed how he's very confident that Kenya will beat the deadline. Of course, one of the few other things that, uh, that was talked about was that 
maybe it might be a little bit challenging, especially uh, to complete it within the 31st December deadline. But of course, uh, like four, five or seven days or a week into the new year, uh, they'll really be set and they can really come out and just uh, be prepared for this tournament. Of course, uh, this leaves uh, a lot of questions to a lot of people. Uh, why would Kenya really wait for uh, the deadline uh, all these last two months to really come out and start construction and start working on the stadium? Yes, you remember already uh, they've had uh, two bids that have failed. Of course, that is something they would have worked on. And then the other thing is that uh, you remember that uh, Kenya uh, were one of the nations that uh, were not hosting hosting their local games at home. So they had time uh, to work on these stadiums even before this, uh, because other stadiums were busy hosting, uh, all its stadiums were not really certified by CAF, so they had time to work on it. So it shows you how inconsistent uh, the nation has been uh, in there. And of course, uh, a lot of people are attributing it to uh, the previous regime. And uh, I, I even saw that uh, the previous regime is already running to uh, to courts of law and uh, of course coming out and uh, even querying uh, the, the election process. I, I just saw uh you know a, a, a statement uh, coming out from the former president coming out and saying that he's not going to let this rest uh because <clears throat> there are a lot of irregularities uh, that he cited in this election uh, of course uh including uh, already knowing the, who is going to be winning the election even before the election was being taken so uh, he wants to go back and fight for uh, what he calls uh, the true leaders of the game and uh, it to me it looks like it's going to be more of a fight and all that uh, because I, I, I entirely think that government especially the government of Kenya we are willing to uh, really have a new era in uh, the governing of uh, this uh, game of football and uh, uh, already Mr. Makomen uh, coming out in one of the interviews uh, on uh, nation media uh, the nation media NTV uh, in Kenya coming out and talking about how uh, he talked to uh, this gentleman and of course coming out and telling him uh, that the truth is that uh, things were not really right, especially with the way the game was run. And uh, he asked him to step aside, not even to go in uh, as uh, a member of, uh, of course, the people that are going to be elected. Uh, he stood in as uh, uh, a running mate for another candidate. And uh, of course, it's also uh, some of the issues that came in there that, uh, you know, it was not even legally right for him to really stand in, even if it's uh, as a running mate. So there has been those fights and it seems like the fights will not end. Uh, but Kenya are very focused already. Uh, the local organizing committee was constituted, uh, of course, being led by the likes of Nicholas Musoni. Like I told you earlier before, it looks like they're really, really trying to fight so hard to see that uh, everything that is supposed to be done is done in time. Of course, uh, that is what uh, the government says. That is what their will says. Uh, but of course, practically on the ground, what happens if at all these stadiums are not ready? Uh, first of all, works on, like I told you, on the Nyayo Stadium are not too much. Uh, there are a few things that are going to be worked on. As it is, uh, it will just need a few uh, adjustments like the lights and all that stuff, uh, really to uh, just make them a little bit more better according to the standards of uh, CAF then they can be really ready to host uh, this big stadium. So they have options and other options of other stadiums that they can really uh, suggest in there. Uh, the likes of the Mukungu stadiums, obviously, all those are under renovations. Uh, so it looks like Kenya are not badly off as it looks in the media, but that really they are really disappointing in one extent because uh, they knew that they were going to be hosting such a big tournament. And of course, I, I even saw a regret from one of the officials. I think it was, uh, I, I think it was the minister himself coming out and saying that uh, it was not a must for them to uh, really host CAF, uh, the CAF Chan tournament. It was not a must. It's not a requirement because they are going to be hosting 2027 that they host this tournament. Uh, so they would have skipped it and said, uh, let's focus on the uh, bigger one. So because even the money that really comes into uh, the country when you compare China and uh, uh, the, 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 the other 2027 20, African Cup of Nations, uh, the dividends and the profits are not the same because there is so much money invested in the uh, African Cup of Nations as compared to the Chan tournament. And even the hosting countries were not there because uh, by the time they gave it to uh, Uganda and Kenya and Tanzania, not a lot of countries were interested in hosting the tournament because of what really comes with the tournament. A lot of money is invested and maybe it, it might not be uh, doing the kind of profits that CAF or uh, the other bodies really uh, involved are really anticipating. But a country like Uganda, a country like Tanzania really uh, saw it as an opportunity to really come in and make their same uh, you know, make themselves hard on the African scene. Uh, so uh, the talk about uh, Kenya not being part of the host countries is really, really uh, being quashed by everyone in Kenya. 
uh, other than of course the media media still have the doubt so let's wait and see let's give kenya uh the, I, I think there are a few details that the minister talked about that i really uh i saw really were genuine and uh, some of them were uh to do with uh, how uh they don't have to complete everything in time uh for the 20 uh, 25 tournament they have to uh do a few things and of course the other thing is that they don't have to have at least of, of course they register two stadiums but it's not about completing uh, the stadiums entirely so that means uh work will still, still be on uh, at uh, that stadium at the Kasarani and then Nyayo Stadium of course they all they had a bit of really roofing it and all that stuff like I told you before it's not going to be happening because of the progress uh, so we expect it to be a little bit uh, better and of course the new uh, gentleman uh, Hussein uh, Muhammad uh, the new FKF president uh, when he came out and talked about uh, what everyone needs to do he talked about all stakeholders coming into the game and uh, of course making uh, this sport that is well known around, all over the world a well paying you know job to really really come in and support a lot of young people uh, so everyone has to come in all the stakeholders have to come in and uh, it is something really really uh, it feels fresh to see a new leader and what they really give us promises uh, but the difference is that uh, usually when uh, everyone stays in office for a little bit longer then the grid comes in then uh, the errors start coming in and of course that is how things uh, get spoiled by the way uh, things are happening in there but all is well uh, for Kenya. Uh, progress is on for Talanta Sports City Stadium in Uganda here. Beautiful, beautiful uh, work that is being done by uh, the Suma Group. Uh, progress on the Hoima City Stadium really looks good. And of course, uh, the stadium, of course, the pictures, uh, day and night, uh, working really, really, it really looks very promising. And to me, uh, it all goes back to the commitment of government as well as uh, the sports ministry. Uh, and uh, I think there's never been unity in the game of football in Uganda. Uh, like it is right now because we are seeing a lot of bodies working together together uh, we are seeing a lot of them coming and doing uh, things to, uh, for the benefit of the nation not for the individuals or uh, the individual uh, <clears throat> Uh, sports federations uh you know uh, in kenya they still have issues with different federations and the success already because he really talked about how he's going to really fight so hard to see that the elections are done in time uh but still you when you see how people were fighting these elections and uh, the AGM uh, and stopping it from happening, you really will see that there's a lot of fights in Kenya. A lot of people had uh, court, uh, you know, uh, court orders that so many, what they did, they went to so many courts around and they put court orders stopping this election. And of course, uh, you need to be wise and you need to have good uh, lawmakers to really come in and uh, know how you can really, uh, really erase all that and uh, have a way forward. So, um, Uganda looking very positive in its stadium construction, <clears throat> Tanzania as well. Uh, the, uh, Samia Suhuru Stadium uh, is also looking very good in Arusha. Uh, so everything really looks positive in the region and we expect it to be uh, very positive. So that was just basically to emphasize the fact that Kenya are willing and are still ready to host the tournament and are still really not losing the hope and are still really uh, re-emphasizing the fact that they still have what it takes to host it. Uh, so we are waiting to see what will happen in the next. CAF seems like they're on the Kenyan side. Uh, so let's wait and see. It's going to be a successful tournament, I still believe because of what we can offer as nations but also of what uh because of the challenges that we faced as the uh, three nations in east africa so that's all that we had for you uh, here on Brinetic sports i really want to say thank you so much for being part of us uh, stay safe enjoy your day and uh, wait for another big update especially on the sporting circles in east africa